Well, I, I, I start by thanking Alex as well as the Quantica for inviting me and also for organizing such a good symposium. And I also like to take this opportunity of expressing my gratitude to Fritz Pop because what I try to do, I have always made this comment even before, you talk to Fritz Pop, he has got the insight and he will say that this should be the case. But he doesn't know how to express this. So whatever his ideas was, I tried to express it in a language and perform the experiment that shows that, OK, everything is quantum. Because normally, from the last couple of lectures, we always we, we talked about something, some quantum nature has to become. So really, re, we wanted to have some hard evidence that is acceptable to the scientist as well as the common people. This will be my endeavor to give you present this situation. Now, I am from a, a small um, place in India. That's a, though the population is 200,000 people there. It's a hill station at 5,500 feet. It's a very pleasant climate, so I work there. Now, let us start with the history. And the history I have written in a quite different way. Not long ago, life was a mystery. Because, and so why living system was a lump of non-living matter endowed with life. This was a general concept. There are some lime living matter. It has got some strange properties, and we call them life. It means two things. When you call it a mystery, we, do not under, we did not understand life at that time. And it was also, a, we did not even hope to understand it. Otherwise, we would not have called it a mystery. So an object of awe and bewilderment, if you can't understand it, you become OK awe oh, and say, whoa, what a creation of God and what, what not you want to say. But that is basically an expression of the fact that we don't understand it and there was no hope to understand it. Data on the living system, because why we are not understanding it? This is given from the next situation. Data was loosely connected with little or no unity. You have got some things of data, something is happening here. Something is happening there, but we cannot find out an overall picture that connects all these things. Next thing is contain many counterintuitive examples. Because in the whole of the conference, everybody would like to say something which doesn't appeal to our senses or something you don't expect in classical physics, and you will get lots of counterintuitive examples in the case of the life. We could not doubt, only admire the creator. So that is for me. History is there. Now we go to the next thing. Then came Schrodinger and Set. I have just, uh, that's a very beautiful book, and most of you may have read it. So I tried to just put the essence that is relevant for, our, uh, the, for this talk. Life seems to be an orderly and lawful behavior of matter, not based exclusively on its tendency to go over from order to disorder, but based partly on existing order that is kept up. This was a statement that he made. Because he spent a lot of time, and he just wanted to see whether the life is a mystery or not. Next thing he said, biological order stems from pre-existing physical order. That is the other thing is, and the next consequence is really comes out to be that he made a prediction at that time when genes were not, well, DNA was not discovered, genes were known. Gene is an aperiodic crystal composed of a linear array of different isomeric components. All these things is 1936. That at that time, he note you all know that he was the creator of quantum mechanics. Now we go to the thing. What are the? the what he caused a paradigm shift. Life became a hard problem of science, and living system became a physical system. That is a very important thing. Is when he said that is okay. Everything there is nothing that he could find it out that seems to violate any physical law. So it has to be a physical system. So this, this is a very big paradigm shift. Now, life was no more a mystery. Still, we do not understand it. We thought it, it is a hard problem. We can solve it. So it has given us a hope to solving this, and that hope was very important. Hard problem is being solved bit by bit by modeling counterintuitive aspects one by one. So this is a standard thing is, if you come across a hard problem, divide it and conquer it. So this is the only situation of doing it. So you select one particular point and do it. Every model is up suspect unless based on experimental evidence. That's the another point, because he said it, OK, you can think about it. 
but unless you provi provide an experimental evidence, then it's only talk in the air. And uh, uh, as a scientist, one should not talk in the air, should be on the ground. So what are the surviving concept of Schrodinger that are still valid? Because those at that time is, living system is a composite structure. That he insisted it. That is biological phenomena are expressed and caused by biomolecules. This is a no, next thing consequence come out out. So what are the biomolecules? Everybody knows it. I don't need not uh, try to bother about it. So we say that all the biological phenomena are expressed and caused by to the molecular biology laboratory we are setting is there. This is the basic theme that they started with that. A stable biological order. So the order doesn't change, it, that remains a stable. So talk about unknown origin and lack of proper description. Th this, these are the problem because he said that order is stable, but why it created it, that we do not know it. That belongs to the hard category. Biological process obey thermodynamics. He insisted about it and talks about information, negative entropy, maxwell Raman. All these are the same aspect of the thing is in order to show that the second law of thermodynamics should not be valid. The other thing is no, no, no new physical and chemical laws are there because there was a chance when said because of the life is thing, we introduced some more laws, even that law was not needed. So these were the very why call it a vital contributions made by the little book called What is Life? So let's talk about first with the stable biological order and that has attracted a lot of attention. So many scientists throughout the world, they are only interested in creating how to do the biological order. Now first they talk about how to say that, how to classify these things. There was a time when the classification was done, talk about the property, they talk about microscopic property, microscopic property, microscopic property or consciousness properties, that is the one classification. Wilbur or all the philosophers, they were talking about hierarchical level of property. Now the physical scientists or the biological scientists, they talk in terms of there is an organism, then you try to understand organism in terms of organ, organ will terms of tissues, cell, organelle, biomolecule. You don't have to go beyond that. Now when we have put a little a small thing, it simply means that we have to explain the organism in terms of organ, but there certain remains, something remain missing. What that remain missing thing is, that is the reason we have to put this uh, a, a small a symbol uh, I, uh, in order to indicate that organ is not completely equal to organism, but ultimately we have to explain it. So we have to complete this chain so that the organism becomes biomolecules. So what are that missing link? That one has to supply and that is, is responsible for the organization itself. The, the same point I have expressed in a different language. An entity at a higher level is describable but not reducible to entities of the lower level. That the organism you can describe in terms of the organ but you cannot reduce. You just say that take so many organ you just can't explain it. Something remain missing. So the, the philosophy they word is they, they say like a holarchy and all those I think complicated word I do not want to use it. All biological phenomena are to be expressed and explained by, by, means, by means of the biomolecule. This is the basic theme that we have to follow it. So nature of organization. Next question is how they are organized. And there are two well-known things that are used it. Either a classical nature of organization or a quantum nature of organization. Classical nature of organization means that is okay. They interact by means of the forces and strains. And you say that it becomes a stable or not. So we'll just talk about next thing. Organization classical. It is based on forces, constraints, and information transfer. That is, if there is an organization, if something is happening, there must be a, some mechanism of giving instruction that is, you behave in this manner. That is, once I am talking it and you are looking, listening to attention to me, so we are all organized. But the, the, the cause of organization is the talk that I am showing it. You listen it and you try to concentrate on that. Biomole biomolecules retain their identities and integrities. That is again the same thing is, that is if there is a, um, uh, suppose a DNA molecules, whether it is in vitro or in, in vivo, it must behave the same situation. This is a classical situation that is meaning of identity and integrity. Succeeds in explaining a few properties at each level. Because that is the whole thing is that is when we call it about classical biology or anything else, these concepts are 
quite, uh, quite a number of properties in every label you are able to explain it. So if you can explain it, be happy with that. There is no problem with that. Those properties become understanding. Negligible effect of the organization on local properties. That is a, a very important aspect. Because suppose you have got a biomolecules, how it will interact with another biomolecule. Uh, the same interaction will take place whether it is inside the organization or outside the organization. So that is a very important pro aspect of the classical situation. Now about the quantum. And I'll just try to make the same thing. Uh, biomolecules subsume their identities and integrity. So if, we, if you are in a quantum system, even if there is a molecule, if you can break that organization, you will see a, a, a DNA or a protein molecule. That is what we call, I think, uh, uh, Bellisop in the very morning call it the jet chemistry. That's the simply thing is that you just wick it and you find it out. But once they are in, in vivo, then their properties will be different because they, they don't talk about their identity. That is a very important point in a quantum organization. The second thing is, cooperative and coordinated functioning without information transfer. This is the very important aspect because if you find that the two molecules interact in such a manner and there is no way of transferring information, so be sure that has to be a quantum. There is cannot be any other thing. Either you say that we don't understand it, why you say that? We say that there must be a quantum situation. A quantum state specifies the system. Then how to describe it? That's a technical word is used, and we will try it about quantum state. Beyond that, we need not worry about it. Don't go any uh, the, the, the quantum mechanics and axioms that is are not needed. Interaction appear situation specific. Now I give you the example of interaction appear situation specific, in the sense that is if you have got some molecules and you know it interacts with other molecules, and then for some times it interacts with that molecule, other times it doesn't interact with that. And our friend Emilio, he just called it that the molecules inside the a biological system, they become monogamous. If they are interested in going to go to a one particular molecule, they will go there, they will not be disturbed. Now, after some times, they will change the situation. So situation is specific, and they are very clear where they are going to do. So that becomes different. And the next thing about is properties become holistic. That is, you can't explain the properties in terms of individual molecules you have to put something else. That is the properties of the whole system is different from the sum of the properties of the individuals. So this is a one basic thing that we always try to search it out. So ultimately, all these things emanate from the quantum system. So naturally, you expect in any system, if you will find these are the properties, be sure that that has to be quantum. But you need more evidence for that. These are all indicative things. Examples of quantum organization. And the, the, all these examples have been quoted. So I just want to have just put it there. Laser is a, one example that is a quantum system that is completely organized. The second thing is a soliton also. Uh, many people, they use it. So I'm just using the right nine thing. Dissipative structure. This was the first time when this Prigojin showed it, thermodynamic fluctuations. If the, if the, this is caused by thermodynamic fluctuation. You can generate its dissipative structure. Phase transitions, noise induced. That is, you go from one phase to another. Uh, these are all quantum systems. A spontaneous breakdown of symmetry. That, that is a new thing, and that has been talked only quite recently, only by few people. Because this is a little bit more, uh, more than the quantum mechanics part. That is, if you have got a system, and their claim is, you know that uh, if you take about this, say, um, solids, they are quite different properties. Why they are different properties? Because they say your symmetry breakdown takes place. And so from a continuous symmetry, if you go to discrete symmetry, there must exist a phonons. So all that type of technology will come. So I'm just not putting all those technology here. Just I say that these are the example of creating a stable quantum mechanical organization in a system. So these are physical system. And all these examples exist, what we call in the non-living. I have no, I have not put any living words. So depending on uh, uh, how enthusiastic you are or how much time you're there, you will find a number of physicists. They will say, OK, this property is mimicked to this living system. Try to do these things. But uh, you try all these things, they will explain some properties. Other properties, they will fail. So that is the, that is the beauty that we have to face with this.
evidence of organization. Let's talk about coherence. Now, the, this is a, 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 we just start because we wanted to explain in terms of the composite structure. So constituent cohere, cohere simply means act in unison. They will act together. That's the thing is, it can be same time acts. That is so many, at one particular time you will notice all the different molecules, they are involved in a particular act. So we'll call it as a space coherence. You can also have a different time acts. That is what we call synchronization or one after their coordination is all there. So either you use the synchronization, coordination, cooperative activity, all this simply means one word surprises it, that is coherence, that there is some type of unison without the nature of the coherence determined by, determined by the source of instruction and information needed for coherent acts and the method of transfer. This is the very important thing is, if you find out that the two molecules, just to take an example, they act together either at the same time or at different times, so there must have um, some way of giving instruction that why you act in the same manner. So if you kind of find it out how the information is transferred, some way of getting instruction, maybe you send a sound wave or a light wave, something or anything you just say it, then you say it is a classical core. Then you can say it, that is okay, now behave in this manner. All right, we have given instructions and you start behaving type it. But there also comes out to be when you know known source and method, that is called a classical coherence. When you can say it, how it is transferred it. But if it so happened, both are unknowable. You try hard, but they cannot, they, you cannot find out the source of information transfer, then it is a clear cut case of coherence. So what we are going to show that something that is happening that cannot occur from any known source of information transfer, so it means unknowable. Now, if this is happening, then it's something strange is taking place. So do, don't call it a strange or counter example. Call it, it is a quantum system. And describe it by means of a different mechanism. Describe it by means of the wave functions. This is the ultimate aim that we want to do. Coherence biomolecular label. So I just give you two examples. And these are all well-known examples. So I just to remind it to change our way of thinking. Biochemical pathways, you know, a, a, any book on bio, biology or anybody will tell that, look, this reaction takes place, this is switched on, next reaction takes place. What switches then on? What causes this coordination? So this is a clear cut example of time coherence of so many biomolecules occurring at different, different places. So the, the high efficiency of energy conversion, you know, because if you are transferring the energy from one form to another, Garnet cycle will tell you classical situation. And if they, I think three years earlier when they talk about in photosynthesis, nearly 90% of the energy is transferred to a productive work. So why this thing has happened, this cannot happen classically. So these are the, it means that they must be acting in coherence. There is no way of doing it. Situation is specific and monogamous nature of interaction uh, that we have called it high fidelity and almost error free process. It simply means that is how we just give you the uh, beautiful example again, um, Patsy Emilio, he said that, okay, suppose you decide that is okay, you are going to scratch your nose. Decision taken place and after the decision, so many um, thousands of bio biochemical processes are taking places in such a coordinated manner, no mistakes occur. Because if a mistake is occurring instead of um, when he's scratching my nose, I will start scratching my hand. So no mistakes, complete fidelity is there. So such a great degree of co coordination takes place. How can this take place? There must be some reason controlling that. And this is the reason why we are talking about in the biomolecules level, there is a, a strong degree of coherence and without any possible source. Trohelik was the first person. He also realized this thing. And this is the reason, um, I, this is a well-known story that uh, he was quite worried when people asked him that what is, what can be the basis of the life? Then he said that only possible situation that has happened, the defining characteristic of life has to be coherence. And I completely agree with that, and, and nobody can disagree with him. This argument were very clean. So mainly indirect evidence. All these things you can say, well, these are the indirect evidence. Ultimately, you provide the direct evidence. Become a, like a chemistry, the same situation is happening. 
what has happened in radioactivity when Madame Curie said that, okay, we produced this polonium and we saw the radioactivity. Chemist says that, well, a chemist doesn't believe it unless he weighs the matter, no molecular, no atomic weight, no radioactivity. Similarly, the thing is there is all indirect evidence. We must produce a direct evidence for the existence of the coherence. So now we am going to talk about the direct evidence. Okay, the direct evidence I am going to give you through a classical photon emission, just a, a, just a brief reminder from a historical point of view. Biomolecular label phenomena, well this, you, everybody in me believes that okay, mm, photon emission is a, what we call the atomic phenomena or at the most level of the basic constituent phenomena. Some atom or my biomolecules will go from one state to another. So what will be happen? There will be a definite wavelength. There will be a definite half-life. It's standard stuff. No up, con the, that will take place. No up conversion of energy. We have talked, uh, we have heard even in the previous lecture. That is, if there is a difference between the excited state, suppose you emit ARU energy supplies in the, in the infrared range, you can't get a visual range. That's the whole thing is. If source of energy is ATP to ADP reaction, this is a normal currency that can supply you 57 kilogram, kilojoules of molecular 0.59 electron volt. It, in a, it, it will be less than that. But if you are getting more than that, that is in the visible range, that is from three to other, so means that the energy has been up converted. So this is a problem. Exponential decay of the signal, because whenever the chemistry involves, where the probability comes it, all the signal has to decay exponentially. You will find everywhere. The signals either absorption everywhere, fluctuation in non-decaying region, because you can also say that something will fluctuate, and you notice this fluctuation will be normal, because you say, okay, you calculate the normal thing, find out the mean and variance, this is you express all biological quantity, everything is done. So these are the very situation that is classical photon emission. So if you get a photon similar system or photon emission that doesn't satisfy any of these properties, then it means that it is not a classical system and that will be amount to be a direct evidence. So just first take about spontaneous photon emission. That is you are not doing anything, take the human being because with the, with all the, all other things, all short complication occurs. So human being put him, him in the dark room for half an hour, so almost all external influence of the um, sun there, and then you find what they are then? Incessant emission from almost every living system in the living state. That's uh, all the pops, spark, um, most are familiar, related to life. Because if every living system emits a photon, so there may be a chance that they have some relation to light. Continuous and mainly in the visible region. The visible region is very important. And because if it is occurs from the transition from one state, that should be a discrete. So continuous, non-decaying, and, and that is mean time with coherence. So if anything is non-decaying, because the spontaneous emission, it doesn't decay at all. So this, there is a constant that somehow or other, some types of strange type of time coherence taking place. Fluctuations, definite, but not normal photo count. So what we are saying it, and that is the entire basis of my talk will be, just to study the information contained in the fluctuation which you normally were bothered about why the system is fluctuating, average it out, take the normal and talk about the variance. And I'm saying that the normal and variance, apart from that, there are certain fluctuations that give you more information about that. And that is the direct quantum nature. Induced, well, this is another photon emission, which is why we call it delayed luminescence and Pop also called it light-induced photon emission, response time within two seconds, so non-exponential DA, again fluctuation. The, these are all these properties, so I need not uh, spend time on that well-known thing. Information about the coordinate uh, act in the spontaneous photon signal. So what information we can expect from a, from a spontaneous photon signal? Duration of quantum coherence. Because you know for how many time the quantum coherence remains there, time in which the signal is in a definite quantum state. That will be a, a simple, a reasonable thing to expect. Quantum state determines the fluctuation in photon number in a quantum signal, and the converse is true in a signal of some subject, we call them healthy. This is a very strong statement I am measuring. That is, if you are situation is find it out that the fluctuation of the photon number correspond to a definite quantum state, then 
the person is healthy. If they do not correspond to a definite quantum state, then the person is not healthy. Now, this is a st statement I am making it based on experimental evidence. There is no axiomatic thing is some experimental end. So it is an extrapolation of an experimental evidence from one particular situation. And I hope that will be valid for all general situations. So those who are practitioner, that's a give you a good example. If you have got an unhealthy person, I'm sure they are that photo spontaneous home if photon emission will not be in a squeezy state. If you make them healthy, you can find it out. Just test your knowledge. Quantum state is a squeeze state is spec specified by four signal specific parameter. These are holistic attribute of the human subject. So this is the thing is how we are going to specify. So all the fluctuations of the thing, they can be specified only by means of the four parameter. One parameter is the intensity and the then three remains that tells you whether you get one, two, three, well, one are coming together, or two photon are coming together, or three photon coming together. That will be the situation to do it. So this is a, a little bit of mathematics, but just to explain it, what is happening. So what you are going to make, how you measure the signal, you just put a photo multiplier, fix a time period, call it as delta t, and make it one after the other. So there will be a n measurement of delta t. You can combine together and call it as n by 2 measurement of 2 delta t. Com combine 3 together, you will get n by 3 of 3 delta t. From these things, then you notice that in every measuring interval, how many photons you have detected. So you can just have got a frequency spectrum. Now frequency spectrum converted to a histogram. We call it a divided by the total number. You get the probability. So you'll immediately get a probability that is in a time period, how many photons are there. Now what you notice, this, these photons can come also from the noise plus the signal. So there is a big problem how to solve this noise and signal problem. So there is a one particular technique that I am using it and that is a very effective it. I can take care of the noise by simply measuring the noise and how to manipulate it. And from that, one can find it out all these four parameters for any. So if you take any spontaneous signal and you make a measurement of the noise, you can find out four measuring situ situation. So this is only an experimental measurement and plus some computer calculations. You only press the button and you will get the result. So I'm not coming out. Typical situation that is we have used it I just give you one signal that has been measured, not in noise also. I was not even present. That was measured by Edward in somewhere in, I think, um, Amersfoort in Netherlands. So he measured 50 millisecond, number of intervals 5,000 times, duration was 4 minutes and 10 seconds, a spontaneous signal. So what you notice, 50 millisecond, 5,000 5, point, 100 millisecond, there will be just the two, two, 250. Five, point, 5 seconds, there will be only 500 points. So what he noticed from that, he calculated for everything. I, there will be a fluctuation for this, fluctuation for this, fluctuation for this. So in, in all the cases, you find out all the fluctuations and then find it out what will be the squeeze state parameter. If you notice that fluctuation of any time period if give you the same squeeze state parameter, it means that you are under the sound footing. And that is the only beauty. Same squeeze state parameter with fluctuation for delta t from 50 millisecond to 4.1 second up to 82. When you try for 83, it gives you different. So that was a very remarkable signal where even I was not present anywhere and that was not even measured with the, even POPs influ influence was not there. So you don't expect that coherence will be there. So, and you know, Roland Van Wyck belongs to the chemical school. So he always thought, okay, this must come from the chemistry, but this signal was very interesting. Always with the parameter. Now, the second thing you can do it. Suppose you have got the number, he said, well, look, these are these fluctuations are there. You just change the fluctuation. Change, simply permute them. One into three, three into two, and then you do the same analysis. Then you don't get the same value of the parameter. So that gives you, okay, you are on a little more sounder footing. That is something more is specific to the signal. This is what we have done occurred in a signal of a patient. Now I'm just giving you from where I, why I want to relate it with the health. Now they, uh, there is a little story. Uh, when I have performed this, uh, calculating these things, something like 1,200 signals I have analyzed. Out of the 1,200, 75% signal gives you excuse state parameter. 25% did not give you. 
So I was worried. Everybody was saying, say, what happens? Why you give you only the result where you are agreeable? Give the result where you disagree. And I have no idea why it is, because we can't do anything. Because they say measurement is done by some others. Computer is doing the calculations. And most of the theoretical calculation is not even done by me. They are done by the well-known physicist in textbook material. So I was buried. Then we come across a person, but we have agreed. That is OK. There, is, there was a lady. She was, she was suffering from multiple sclerosis. And there was another doctor who was saying, she was again, again a lady, who would say, OK, I can treat color puncture to the, to the lady. And then we'll find out something is happening, whether it is improving or not. So the doctor was interested in finding out what is the effect of the color puncture. And I was interested in whether the, what is the effect of in our, in our this squeeze state parameter. Then what we notice, uh, we performed the experiment. So then what we got it, that before the color puncture, the patients, all, you don't get all these squeeze state parameter in a different situation. As soon as you treat it, uh, the lady said, I'm very happy. I have I've been re 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 relieved from this situation, and this parameter indicated everything is fine. So that we got it. Now, then we also got it that there are a cases where you completely you don't get a relief. Sometimes, suppose out of the, you make it, um, go on summing it, in one or two cases, you will not get it. So immediately, you can think about some coherency parameter and say that is OK, never in, in near in the squeeze state. So there are two things happen. Quantum signal tried to become a pure squeeze state as the result of the treatment. Never it states, leave you, you can talk about coherency index or as squeeze states index, whatever you like. And then we claim, and this is the claim, it is indicator of the health. So that claim has to be verified by performing more experiments. And for that, you people are, are needed. Signal of different location and subsets are squeeze state with the same face, face angle. This is another thing is, that is, look at the human being, any human beings. So concentrate only on the face angle of these four parameters. You are going to get the same values. So I will just show you. This is this is give you the example. The, the, I am just concentrate only on one. Sorry. Concentrate only on one thing. These were the left dorsal, left from right dorsal. Before, this point was giving a different value. And this immediately gives you all right. And the, the, this is what is left form, left dorsal, right form, right dar, right form. These are the well. Oh, oh, okay. There seems to be a little difficulty. This graph should have been here, and this should be no right form, right was that okay? Before and after, that is the only thing. No, I, there is no. But I was. Oh, this is after the treatment. Okay, this is the after the treatment. So there must be a, some. Yeah, this is okay. So I'm, I'm just worried. Before the treatment, you are getting these are the, how these parameters were. Just look at this situation. Right dorsal was looking all right. There was no difficulty. Left warm, left dorsal. And you just look at the other thing is. Everything becomes very systematic and coherent. So what is happening? So there, this is a, a way of measuring situation. All other parameters, forget about it. We have just track it, track it. Then we can do the second thing is also. And that is more interested in many, many, but this is the new figure that people may not have seen it. Where there was a healer, and healer was Renzo Salani. And I'm just, I have performed this experiment with a number of volunteers. So I'm just putting it myself because not to advertise anybody. The thing is, OK, so what you are saying, this is the, oh, yeah. This particular situation is we have just measured what is the coherency index of the healer at the four positions, left arson, before he started the wind, he started trying to heal it just immediately. So this was my situation. This was during we were trying to do healing and after that. So you notice that somehow or other, uh, I, my, the, the, this side, left side was a little defective and he tried to heal it. We tried to become very, uh, and this was the situation that is happening. So what was the net result I am giving you now in words, net summary of the effect of the healer. So whenever you get a healer, he will be a coherence left and right hand side completely. When he started preparing himself to the healing, so immediately his coherence will change. Now, so far as the patient is concerned, patient has not done it. So he started doing healing. During the healing, I can measure only one person. 
So that is, I have me measured it with the healer. If the healed, the, the patient only, then her or his coherence will change. And they both, the healer and the heal, will try to equalize. They will become, they will come out to the same coherence. This is what you call attunement, that tuning is taking place. And after some times, what will happen? Healer will become sick, <laughs> heal will become healthy, and this, but this will not last. The healer will recover his poise after a little, maybe an hour or so, and those first, those who are the patient, he will also come down to the same point. So maybe they need another treatment or all those testing, and I have not performed any more experiments with the healer. That is only, there is no, what we call sustained experiment, just in the case of the multiple sclerosis. I have performed with the same person, something like throughout a year we measured it. Then you notice that is okay. After the effect of, uh, there is a, some persistence effect, but here something is happening. So something is happening, I do not know what is happening, but this is detectable. Now, once it is detectable, this is detectable through a quantum situation, and that tells you much more interesting thing is, that is you can find it out how the attunement takes place, and that is very important because we have been hearing that is okay, we are tuned with each other, okay, this is the way of measuring this. A few observations, change in coherency index in healed and healer, I've just summarized it. Coherence index of the heal is nearly one, and signals from four location is squeezed state during healing, all right. During the healing, he becomes very coherent, very healthy. A coherency index of the healer decreases after healing. No control measurement with disease and cure, because all these things, people said that, okay, we suffer it is because I gave the example according to the healer. He said, well, there is a, some block is in somewhere in me. I, I was not observing it, but it was, his observation, I said, well, okay, try to treat it. Now, the net result, I cannot collect, um, correlate with something else because we have not performed it. So we are looking for a persons to perform this experiment whenever I get an opportunity. Okay. Now, this is, the, that was a spontaneous similar, nothing we have done it. Now, we are going to talk about induced, light induced, if you take a person, okay, suppose you are in a quantum situation, can you change the quantum state? Because whenever you are able to change it, there is then something new can come up. So this, this is the thing what pops and all other thing is entire industry of the last 25 years was only based on you sign the light and see the decay and have the parameters. And I suggested that, okay, you can describe it by means of these four quantum parameters. This was a, a standard calculation that we can do it. And then we want to say that these are the four parameters that describe systems. So examples, I give you just a, an example to give an indication. This is a measurement not with the human being, done with the lichens. You know, the same parameters, the time is started from one millisecond to 1,000 seconds. That's a, quite a long time, the, the measurement per band, band. And this is the type of the single that we are going to get it. And we try to see it. If you want to fit the same thing in one scale, then you notice that the same four parameters are able to describe the signal on an average for a four, I think, seven orders of magnitude. That's the fantastic thing is that you don't have got such an explanation. So now we did it because this was the reason why um, some of our chemical friends, they said that, okay, so far as biophoton emission is concerned, this is only a chemical effect. So I started, let us give, treat, put hydrogen peroxide on a, on a human person, a very small concentration, and see how, how the change has taken place. Now, what you are going to get it, if you just apply hydrogen peroxide, I think uh, um, I give you the value, nearly non-decaying region of two minutes, okay. So you, you know the signal decays for nearly an hour, and uh, we'll show you the signal next time, so the, just, uh, this is the type of signal. Five persons, you know this is the tie, and these signals, if you look at, forget about the scale, then you will notice that these things really look like that you have seen in a delayed luminous for a different situation. So this is what you are going to get. But what they are there, they are different thing. This is on the dorsal side. We have applied pipe concentration. So the signal doesn't go much that thing. And this is the palm side. These are the signal they are going there. So forget about it. You can analyze this signal. And that is the next part that I'm going to do it. Because one hour is a very long time, and so far two minutes the signal will hardly decay. 
So you can treat it as a spontaneous signal and find it out what is, what is it your uh, coherency index. And the surprising thing is, you know, these are the 10 signals that we have done it. In all the cases, for everything, you are going to get a coherency index of one. So somehow or other, as, you, as soon as you treat it with something foreign material, body immediately reacts that, okay, we must become very healthy and fight it out. So we gives you coherency, coherency index of one. So this is, and then we have calculated the parameter. Okay, let me just tell you. It, the, then these are the parameters. What trick we have done with the spontaneous emission, the same trick we can also do in the case of the uh, decay parameter. Because instead of having a 50 millisecond analyze it, make it 100 millisecond, then anal analyze it. This is what we have analyzed it. Now we come to this thing. This is the B0. Now all these parameters, they comes out to be the same. So no matter what measuring interval that you are taking it and try to analyze the signal, the parameter comes out to be the same. That means that is the model is correct. Because I will show you next case. This is second parameter B1. These are all the things, they are a straight line. A straight line. This is a fourth thing that was not giving a straight line, but this was all lying in a bunch, uh, in a region. That simply means, okay, you are, the, the parameter is not very well determined. Now look at, if you try to do with the exponential decay, these are the parameters that you get. It. So it means that if you want to describe this situation by means of the expo exponential decay, that description was incorrect. Look about this, this is the correct description. So means, all these things it because that the system is not only that quantum that remain quantums for a long time. So what if the signal is quantum? Now we come to the more interesting part in which that will be more interested. Emission, if the signal that you are going to get it either through mind say, chemical induced or spontaneous, if it is a quantum that remains for a long time, so you don't talk about emission from a biomolecule. You change the language immediately, the quantum concept curve it. You say emission, you have got association, or the next thing will be entangled. So what you are going to get, living system is concerned, it has got an entangled by photon field. So now we have got the entanglement, we talked, we heard EPR and all other things, they only talked about one aspect. That is, if you are far away, you can have the information about the other system. But the other aspect is very important. If you have got an entangled state, all the information about the system, you can either have the photon or from the matter state. And that is very important. The defining feature of a living system is its two equivalent aspect, matter and field. So don't worry, this is all what all philosophers were saying. Either you talk in terms of the matter that you can just manipulate it, observe it in another thing way. That, mean, that is not different from dead matter, but it has got a field aspect. Field aspect means you, you can know all, prop, all about the matter from the field itself. Go far away, just try to find it out. If you are sick, you know that they are not in the squeezy state. Maybe in future we will be able to determine it. That is, if you are suffering from this disease, you know that your quantum state will be quite slightly different. That we have to discover it simply by experimentation. You can't have a theory for this because it standardize it. Matter is localized while field is extended. So matter is a localized, you don't have to worry to be stay there, you can be far away. So basically, this photon field, something like an oracle, that tells you everything about uh, the system concerned. So I, now I'm using it, the or 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 oracle in, in a different thing. If you look through the dictionary, they say oracle was a thing when there was a witchcraft and then their oracle was there and so people say forget about witchcraft, it's bad, come to modern medicine. Now I'm saying all the modern medicine, they are doing the witchcraft. Because they are not using the oracle of the biophoton. If they use the oracle of the biophoton, they will be able to do correctly treatment. It. Don't treat it in like that. Okay, you have to cut it, all these things. You can probably do it in a much better by manipulating the field. The other thing is also possible. If you want to treat a person, there are at least, well, there are not only, there is not one way that is also, the, the treatment with the only matter field is not only the around. You can alter the field or you can take a combination. You might, you might find some diseases are better manipulated by only altering the matter. Others are better manipulated by altering the field. Oh, but who has got the capability to alter the field? I have no idea. I have not tested anything. In the just previous lecture, when we heard about, he talked it, okay, you can 
put a resonance and all, all the other thing is whether it worked or not, I will believe it only when we'll perform the experiment and see whether the change takes place. If the change doesn't take place, it means that the coherence is not arranged. So this is a one way of saying it, and this is a new way of what we call is treating the persons. So this is a future situation. So I believe that the oracle of the biophoton will stop the practice of witchcraft practiced by the modern medicine. Either provides complete information of a living system, that's the same statement. Either can be manipulated to improve health. So we just explained it. If matter can detect field, oh, that's a, a never, ne, ne, never situation. Now, you know, the field is always detected by matter, whether it is a non-living matter or a living matter. Non-living matter is a photomultiplier. It detects the field. But there are living matters. They can also detect the field. We can also detect the photons. And some maybe we are able to understand this photon. So if you can detect the self field, suppose you know, you can also detect your own field. That's a speculative argument. So can learn one's own intentions and future. This, is, this was considered to the most hard problem. If you look through this, they talk about consciousness. They say that only that the difficulty is, how can I understand my own intention? So the only way of understanding your own intention is that is you have got your copy, the second copy, which is very important. And the second copy provides you, because you can use it, then you can use your, understand your intentions. And that will be a very good thing. It, but this is, an, um, this is what you call an extrapolation of the evidence. OK, because this is possible. But I'm not saying that this happens because we have no direct evidence. Other fields, remote sensing, because OK, other field is detection is all right. Even Rupert Seldrak, they also say it. OK, I can detect the field if somebody, they call it is a morphogenetic field. I am calling it the, there by biophoton field. If I can detect it from a distance and I can learn, learn what you have doing it. So Rupert Sheldrake only said that, OK, you can detect your own field of your own, own, own species. But there are ex example, I think, uh, uh, Russian groups will tell you that is OK. People, the fish X can detect the field of the frog and amphibian. So there is a, some cross-species detection also. So this is not a, that type of thing that is happening. But this is an example. They can detect it. Now, once they detect the field, then there must be some way, entire mechanism of how to interpret and all other things. But in principle, supervenience will tell you, OK, you, many things are possible. Remote sensing is quite there. You do not have to worry about it. So all that, in, that I know, if I can detect your field, and if you say, that, OK, what nonsense is talking, I will know that, OK, because I'm able to detect it. I'm not talking nonsense. Self-similar field, learning from the members of the same species. This is what is the basically a report Sheldrake argument. That is OK for similar situation. We can always de detect it. If fields can be produced at will, oh, remote. That's another thing is. Now, this is what we say that we can detect it, but we can become more, more speculative. OK, I can produce the field. Now, I'm not saying how you produce the field. There are all these gadgets, the gadgetry, they are saying that is OK. You are trying to produce some field, but uh, I have a little doubt because they don't produce this, uh, what you call the squeeze state field. They, some, they only produce normal um, a mixture of harmonic oscillator, uh, harmonic fields only. So if you are able to produce a squeeze state field and just give its instruction to some other, there are some of the species may say, OK, what he's saying is giving instruction to me. And uh, long, long ago, I read a book that uh, the entire program of the bio molecular biology with the um, American army was been interested in manipulating the, from, from a dist remote distance the behavior of different people. And that was the reason they were studying molecular biology. So this is an example. If you can produce the field of your choice, give the instructions in such a manner so the others will say that, OK, it is now better to fight, then people will fight. And if you gave the instruction, no, it is not better to fight, they will not fight it. So all these things are possible. That seems very sensible. If fields can be produced at will and remote intervention, what we have to do now? That's the program, and that's, I think, everybody needs a support. Measure holistic attribute and determine their relationship with their quality. That's a normal experimental program. That is, suppose you have determined all these parameters, either decay or from the spontaneous emission. Then you say how these parameters are changed. Suppose you change any parameters. That is, human beings, we have said it, OK, we can change it. But what happens to non-human beings? Agriculture, 
Well, the, the one example I was more interested, suppose uh, adulteration in milk or adulteration because I become to India and adulteration is a big problem and all food quantity. So my own suggestion will be try to measure all these things parameters and I suspect that we will be able to find it out what is the amount of adulteration. If something is pure or not, we can identify it. So this is a one possibility. Now that in order to do this possibility, we need a lot of experimental just to standardize a thing. Once you have, have a standard table, then well, the sky is the limit for identification of these things because it, this, this is, is a entangled state. It's got a complete information. Anything that you can think of manipulating with the body, uh, with any living systems, that can same be done to the study of their field. Make models for entangled. That is the another problem. How can they have happened? And this is where I think Emilio, we are trying to, he, he, he is the leader of my thinking. So we are trying to find it out. How can you have got a system where the something can be entangled? And that, that he says, okay, here, um, I think his next talk is his. So how the water plays a role and how you can entangle the field can exist there. So this is a question of theoretical modeling. Don't worry about theoretical modeling, but that has to be found it out somewhere. Learn how to extract information from a photon field. Because once you have get it, analyze it, do it in this manner. Because this is what I am saying, that uh, for the last 20 years or so, Fritz Pop and uh, many other persons, he was analyzing all this food quality and other thing is only using one parameter, not analyzing the analysis in this manner. Now we can re revisit them. So there, are the, there were some problems where he was not successful. I'm sure that if he analyze in this manner, he will be successful. So we have to redo these things. Produce quantum signal and study their effect on living. That's the another way is just try to produce these signals and see what effects they are there. Because we have studied only the effect of non-quantum signal, tremendous effect. We say that, okay, to irradiate it with any amount of radiation, microwave radiation, they are trying to do it. So why not if you can produce a visible range, squeeze the state system, and if you are able to do it, one have to do experimentally and then find it out. Learn to manutape, manipulate, entangle. That's the another thing is, that is suppose you have got a field and how to manipulate them, that is our very basic equation. Okay. So this is, we have not now come to the end, what I have written it. So, and while after listening to the various talk, uh, the two more comments I'm just adding that was not in there. Number one thing is that the, the quantum situation has got another advantage. That advantage is, you know, we, what we called in mathematics, it's an analytic function. That is, if you know the system only for a small uh, region, you can know, you may have the prediction for all the time to. So if you know a definite quantum state, if some system is there, and if, it, if you don't change our conditions, then probably you can also predict the future that is going on. So all types of things, is, there is very exciting field, and we should try to do it and try to find it out. Some of these uh, persons, yeah, oh, yeah. And another point that I really missed it, that is not included. But there I want to do it, OK. Suppose somebody is doing meditation, because in the last lecture, people talk about transcendental meditation and all other things. So the one experiment was performed. That experiment was performed with the 20 persons doing transcendental meditation, at least for a period of 10 years. 20 persons doing other type of meditations, that is Jain, Buddhism, Chinese, quite a complicated lot. And the 20 persons who claim not to do any meditation for the last 10 years, they are all were non-spoker. They have got the same median age. And we tried to measure all these parameters. Then what we noticed, the notice is that is one parameter, what we call the R. There were a significant difference in the groups that is with the, the, it is the doing is transcendental meditation and all other things. So we could often discover it that, OK, these, this type of meditation, how deep you are in a meditation state, what transformation has taken place. So if as the result of the meditation, if some transformation in your body will take place in your thinking or body, whatever you want to say, it, that will be exhibited and rather broadcasted by your biophoton field, and that is detectable to a non-human detector. Human detectors will always used to know 
we can coming from India, they will say that, okay, people will see the discipline and say that, like, you are not good. So you are not saying one only thing. He was only analyzing their by what on field and say that, okay, you are good, not good. But that can also be done by means of a non-living DX detector. So that will be quite interesting thing. Tuning is another thing is you can know when people are tuned there. And so but I think the possibilities are limitless. So good. that's the only thing is, and with these things, we hope that you all join in the efforts of Quantica to propagate these ideas. Thank you very much.